Do you think somebody lives in here? <laughs> I'm serious. No, shut up. I swear, I've been here like 10 times and I've never seen this room. Traces of bloody hands, somebody tried to escape and was trapped in here. Then he... Am I gonna be bitten by a snake or something? Yeah, maybe. Oh my goodness, what don't we do for good content? My name is Anna. I'm an English former fashion and textile designer. I moved to Paris, age 23, to work for the French couture house Bauman and stayed for the croissants, the wine, and of course for Philip, a filmmaker from the South Tyrolean Alps. After 10 amazing years, getting married, buying and renovating two homes and having two babies, we decided city life was no longer for us. Philip had been dreaming of buying a chateau since the day we met and finally convinced me to start looking. We came to visit Chateau gonville saint fleur Despite being in quite poor condition and needing a complete renovation, we immediately fell in love. With a tight budget, we had no choice but to do most of the renovations by ourselves. We're learning new skills as we go, building muscles we never knew we had, and getting creative to make the chateau as personal as possible whilst preserving its historic features. It's all part of this crazy family adventure and we wouldn't change it for anything. Not in the kitchen today because we have quite an urgent matter that needs seeing to. We have our architect who's going to turn up in about two hours I think and we are going to need to figure out what we're going to be doing with these two outbuildings. So you might remember we already did a tour of this longhouse but we never got round to touring this outbuilding here and we need to go in there and have a quick look and see if we can figure out what we want to do with the layout so that when he comes, we can give him a brief and he can start planning. The previous owners used this as an office for their cider and Calvados distillery business. And before that, it would have been used as a farm building. So traditionally, farmers would have lived here and cattle and grain would have been stored here too, probably. And here you can see the traditional building technique with clay. This is hay mixed with clay and that's it. And it's a perfect insulation. Unfortunately, sometimes in the 60s probably, they came up with the idea to put concrete on top of it to preserve it. But they achieved exactly the opposite because concrete doesn't let the building breathe anymore. So all the water that would go in, in between the beams and these bits would just sit there and slowly these beams would all rot. That's why we lost the lower part of these beams and it's a pity. Come, I'll show you something. Here's the stone, the original stone wall, and then they plastered over with concrete. The water came in, came in here. Because it's concrete, it doesn't breathe, it stays in there and everything behind rots. So that's one of the main things that we need to do when we start restoring this building, is to remove all of that old concrete. Yeah, so, so before we even start to renovate, we have to take off all the concrete, expose the stone, do a nice lime render on top of it, or in between the stones and then assess the damage and certainly replace a lot of these beams. It's here, this is all concrete. That's crazy. And, and wherever there's concrete, you have rods behind. But here, where there's clay and straw, the timber is in good condition. Also, they have painted this wood red, which is not my favorite color. So I think we either strip it back to wood or we paint it, but in another color. What yeah. color would you suggest, Anna? Maybe Normandy green? Normandy green. Is it Normandy green now? <laughs> You see quite a lot of Normandy green yeah. buildings like this, don't you, in yeah. the region? It's like in tourist shops when they sell products, they give it the name. Here it's called the Normandy candy, and the same candy in Britain is called the Brittany candy. That's what you do. This is the Normandy green now. <sighs> Ta-da! It's a bit dark in here. You can't tell from the outside, but this is actually a very, very large building. Can we try and open any of the other doors or the windows to try and get a bit more light in here? Because it's quite dark. Try. Look at this. Look. Oh, I wonder how long this door hasn't been opened. Well, we've never opened it and no. we've been here for two years, so. Well, it's not like we spend a lot of time in here. <laughs> right, let me switch on the lights. 
<laughs> doesn't seem to be working. Doesn't seem it? to be working. Got a nice view out of here. Yeah. Oh, Anna, look. A I've view out that. onto the cow fields. <laughs> what is it? I swear, I've been here like 10 times and I've never seen this room. I have never been in here either. Come in. What look is at it? This. A luxury toilet. It's a luxury ensuite toilet. I don't know, how did they get water in here? It's a good question because they, there shouldn't be any water here. Hmm. Yeah, but it must have been connected. They wouldn't have just put a sink and toilet and not have a, ha, had it connected to the water. That's true. Where are yeah. you? Here. Ah, oh, what were you doing? Having a pee outside because there's no water. <laughs> Look, there's a butterfly who can get scared again. I mean, they are really big and black, these butterflies. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it. Yes, especially for Australian standards. Look at that. Yeah. Look at that. It's gigantic. It's at least three centimeters. Yeah, but it's so black. It's very black. And it flew in my face. I don't want to touch it because... Go on. It doesn't care. No. Look, there's also water. There are some pipes coming in, but I have no idea where that could come from. I think there could have been somewhere a water tank. That would be the bad news. The good news would be if there are, after all, some water connections coming in here and we're just not aware of it. What's this sign? It says Frinac Products France, méthode de destruction moderne des déchets. Modern way of garbage disposal. I think they found that somewhere and repaired the wall with this. I don't think that was meant to advertise garbage disposal inside this barn. <laughs> and as you can see, all the beams are very low here. I almost touched them. But I had a word with Benoit and he said there's a way to lift all of them up without compromising the stability of the building. He's gonna modify somehow the roof structure. I don't know exactly how, but look how beautiful this is. If we put in new floorboards, and we're definitely gonna make a second floor in here, then we can get rid of all these intermediate beams. So we keep the big old ones. Now this one has been doubled up because it was too moldy probably. But here you can see the the heavy, big, old, nice beams. So we keep these ones and we get rid of the intermediate ones. So even if we can't lift them up, I don't think it would be a huge problem because it's part of the charm of the building, isn't it? Yeah. Should you go up there? Yeah, I've never actually been up there. Yeah, I mean, we have a history in ladder accidents. But look, do you think this is a bad sign? <laughs> it looks pretty old, that ladder. Oh, I'm gonna let you go up there. I think it's all right. Ooh. Oh, huge. Do you want to see? I want to come up there. Are you wearing your best jeans again? Yes, I am. Wow. Oh, wow. It's amazing. Now, are the floorboards safe? They are. So exciting to be up here. Oh. It smells a bit of cat pee though. That's just a musty smell. Yeah. Uh, I want to walk over there, but I don't know how. Well, we have to try it at some point, how stable it is, so. It's better you than the children. I mean, seriously, um, I've just found a little key. Careful, 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 careful. All oh, right. <gasps> oh, I don't know if we should be both on this. That's. That's funny, it sounds nice. But I'm gonna keep it in case I find something. Yeah, a treasure so box. I'm really scared of... This is probably where they would have um, bought hay up and things like that. Nice view, onto the cows. Really nice. Oh, it's one of those, ah, it's attacking me. It's coming after me, seriously. Yeah, because you were not nice to them. You said they look ugly. Imagine this as a window. It's gonna be a beautiful view outside here, isn't it? Yeah. It's gonna be such a nice room up here. It's gonna be amazing. I kind of think I'd like to live in here. Another butterfly. What are these weird metal papers here everywhere? Look, it's really strange. This is a rather new extension cable. Do you think somebody lives in here? <laughs> I'm serious. No, you shut up.
Well, it doesn't feel totally safe when you walk up here. No. Look. Look at that massive piece of wood. Look, I found this. What's that? I don't know. Some kind of um, postage stamp or something. Okay. From the previous owner with the address. Some traces of bloody hands. Somebody tried to escape and was trapped in hand and you know. Well, you have a nice view onto the church and the presbytère. Where are you going? I'm going back down. You coming? Yes. Where are you? Down here. <laughs> that looks spooky. <laughs> it looks like a forgotten country dance club. What's good to see is there's definitely some areas you could easily open up to make windows and bring in light. For example, here. I can't open it because I think there's something on the other side, but... Look at the state of this wall, Philip. It's completely warped. There's a few plants growing in. It's really in bad state. On the upside, there's still some plugs to can switch the light on. I love the fact that it's all like different heights here, you know, that you get all these. What's in there, Anna? Hmm. I don't know, some fuel, some oil. Maybe some toxic waste. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. So it looks like a filter. Some part of a machine. Heating is here. Ready and to the be. Thermostat. Ready to be switched on. So what do you think we should do in here? Should we have? Should it be like one big? Long house, one big sheet that can be rented out by like a big family or? I think this is too big to turn it into one unit only. I think it could become three self-contained apartments with each having a living room, kitchen downstairs and maybe two rooms upstairs. Yeah, that sounds good. So then if it's just like a couple or, you know, a small family, they can just rent out one part of it. Yeah, exactly. This is massive. This is. Definitely too, too big for one family or even for a family with friends. Unless we move in here. Then it would be just big enough. <laughs> so we move in here and then we rent out the chateau. Yeah. Who needs a chateau if you can have a beautiful building like this? But it is charming. I do love this. I mean, it's one of the reasons I fell in love with the chateau is all the outbuildings. It has a huge potential. You know, that's what real estate agents always say when they show you a really shitty place. It has a huge potential. And that's what I would say here. And it's true. If you restore it, if you bring back the, the wooden features and mostly renovate the wall and take all the concrete off, it will look really, really nice. But I don't think we put thatched roof on this one because it's huge and it would cost a fortune. So I think this is going to be slate. And that's accepted, isn't it, in the region? Oh yeah, it is. We can put either slate, thatched roof or some terracotta roof tiles. The other thing I love about this building is that you get the morning sunrise over here, so it's beautiful light in the morning. And then in the evening, you get the sunset on this side. It's perfect. And look, Philip, there's even some nice brick steps here. Oh, yeah. There's probably, under here, there might even be some nice stones. Like a terrace or something? Yeah. This is basically the view you will have from that house. 
it's beautiful. So exciting, isn't it? It is. And it's actually thanks to our patrons that we are able to get this project started already. Because the money from our patrons is contributing towards the restoration of the chateau, but also these outbuildings. And the fees for the architect, in order for him to create plans and then for us to get planning permission, are all being 100% financed through our Patreon community. So we are so grateful. Thank you so much. Look who's here. <laughs> the architect. I just saw him. He saw the camera. Oh no, oh, he's coming. Him. <laughs> Do you think I should go and help him? Because you're so good at measuring? Yeah. I don't think it's necessary. And here, underneath these bushes, rambles and trees, there's actually another building. You wouldn't even know it's there. This is the official land register map. Here's the church, here's our chateau, the two outbuildings, the two longhouses. And this is it. According to Google Maps, about 10 years ago, it was still there. So if we are lucky, we could get permission to rebuild something there. It wouldn't be a house to live in, but maybe an outdoor dining area or a pool house. I think that sounds exciting. It does. We just need to find the money. What if the bull comes? No, he's gone now. Just some harmless cows. No, he's there. Look, no. he's there. Of course. No, that's not him. That's, that's him. just the cows. I've spotted the remains of one of the walls of the building. Can you see that? Oh, yes. An antique wall. Well, I think there's even some big stones. I mean... And look, a beam. This is definitely a beam from the building. Oh, yes. I thought it was part of the tree, but you're right. Can you see? I don't know what that is. Some kind of corrugated roof or something, probably. Well, we've never been able to go in there because it's just so overgrown and with brambles and nettles, but maybe we could try. I need to film so you can go in. Yes. Come on. Am I going to be bitten by a snake or something? Yeah, maybe. Oh, there's another beam under here. It's crazy that they just let this fall apart and get so overgrown, no? Eh? Well, I can definitely see some of the timber frame, some of the structure. Come on. My goodness. What don't we do for good content? <laughs> Silly. It feels like a jungle here. Oh, okay. I think you just broke a <laughs> just, floorboard. Yes, I just broke the floorboard. But look, there's pieces of timber all over the place. Look. Oh, yeah. There's one. It's like a, an old barrel. Maybe a, maybe a cannon. Have you seen this, Anna? Yeah, it looks amazing. We have to come and do some excavation, I think. I think we do. Philip, what's this? What? Oh. Oh, you know what it looks like? What? That looks exactly like the door hinge from our chateau back door. You mean the one we had to pay about 600 euros to replace? Well, it was for two of them, but it does. It's a massive door hinge, so whatever door it was. And this type of, um, it's called queue de carpe, so carp tail shaped, and it is 18th century. Wow. Or older. That's amazing. But it also makes you realise how urgent it is that we restore these other two outbuildings because otherwise this is what's going to happen to them. It is a bit sad because this is, this is a historic building and 10 years ago it was still here and then it was neglected and completely crumbled and it's probably beyond repair. On the other hand, if all these buildings were in good conditions, we wouldn't have been able to buy it, would we? Probably not. Another project. I'd like to see if there's another possible entryway, but I don't think so. Oh, look at this. More beams. There's another structure behind here. It's not easy to see. And it's even worse from this side.
Bah, suite à au relevé et une petite analyse morphologique du bâtiment, hein, qui fait aujourd'hui 27 mètres 15 de long, on peut s'apercevoir qu'il a été conçu en trois fois, deux ou trois fois. Ah oui. Et qu'il a eu deux extensions. Et là, en fait, qu'il y avait l'ancien mur de pignon, où il y avait les anciens colombages de l'ancien pignon. Ah oui, d'accord. Donc c'est là où il y avait ça voilà. terminé ici avant. Après, on est sur un système constructif en plus différent entre cette partie-là et cette partie-là. A savoir que là, les sommiers ne dépassent pas vers l'extérieur, ils sont posés sur des poteaux. Oui. Et le sommier qui a été rajouté pour faire l'extension, lui, il ressort à l'extérieur, vous pouvez le constater dehors. Tous les sommiers, c'est des sommiers d'époque euh, qui sont euh, taillés dans du bois brut, euh, sorti de forêt, donc qui ne perdaient pas de bois, donc il euh, y a encore l'écorce, etc. Et là, on voit bien que cette euh, ferme-là, elle, elle a été taillée euh, parfaitement bien carrée, avec les, les traces de... De des scie, scie oui. mécanique. Oh, oui, elle, elle est 19 20 e puisque sinon il n'y aurait pas de traces de scie sur les sommiers. Et ici, ils sont dehors. Oui. Donc ça, c'est plus tardif que ça. Et c'est peut-être fait plus, plus à l'arrache Non, non, c'est un, 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 un autre système de construction qui est plus tardif oui. que celui-là. Okay. Okay. Si celui-là est 17 e et celui-là est plutôt 18 e et l'autre là-bas plutôt 19 e 19ème, donc il y a peut-être trois, trois, trois époques. époques ouais. Ouais. Et l'autre chose, c'est que les, les écharpes, là, en fait, ce qu'on appelle les écharpes, qui sont les, les colombages de contreventement de la maison, ici, ils sont entrecoupés. Oui. Ils sont très peu pentus et entrecoupés euh, à chaque fois par des colombages. Oui. Ce qui est typique euh, 17-18e. Ok. Tandis que là, en fait, ils sont par trois Je vois. obliques. Oui. Ce qui est beaucoup plus récent. Entendu. D'accord. Ok, ok. Et c'est marrant parce que. Ici, on voit bien que, je pense qu'ils ont trouvé ce, cette poutre, elle était un peu tordue, ils ont simplement adapté ah oui, le mur. Euh, ils adaptaient leur construction à la poutre qu'ils avaient, alors que bah, la nouvelle génération et les constructions contemporaines, c'est on fait du carré oui. et ouais. du linéaire. Oui. Ah oui, c'est super. Joli dessin. Ça serait quoi le défi, la difficulté pour rénover ce bâtiment euh, Reprendre l'intégralité de la charpente qui a vécu dans le temps et qui s'est quand même particulièrement dégradé et euh, en refaire une habitation euh, au goût du jour et confortable pour ses occupants. Mais nous sommes quand même sur un, un très beau bâtiment euh, d'époque qu'il convient de maintenir en, en l'état. Anna, before we get to 100 messages asking us about our kitchen, I thought we'd do a little kitchen update. What do you think? Good idea. Last week we posted plans and measurements of our kitchen and a lot of you guys were so kind and sent us your ideas about our kitchen and we will definitely share them with you probably next week. Also, we made a video about our favorite kitchen inspiration. Very interesting ones uh, coming from my side, some less interesting ones from Anna But unfortunately, all these images are copyrighted, so we figured out we can't show them you to you on, on YouTube. But, 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 but we can show them to you on our Patreon page. If you are interested in finding out a bit more about our ideas, then where are we putting the link? This way? Up here. Up here to our Patreon page, so you can watch the video there. That was a very good segue to make you subscribe to our Patreon account, if you haven't done it yet. <laughs> yeah, I think it was pretty... Smooth. Very smooth. Seamless. Professional. The patients will flock in now by the hundreds. Coming already, look, the first one is already here. Yeah. <laughs> so, these hinges had to be changed. So you can see these hinges on the left side are not identical because We couldn't find identical ones. Look at this. Anna, I have to show you something. What is it? What you found. Look at this. Oh my goodness. It is the piece. It's the same piece. Oh my goodness, I can't believe it. 
Well, you guys, you don't know because this was pre-YouTube channel. But one of the first things we did when we moved in here was to remove a bathroom that was here. This wall was blocked up and we reopened the door and luckily found the old original 18th century doors in one outbuilding. However, there was on one door these metal parts missing, but I couldn't find them. So we found a blacksmith who would reproduce them. He didn't make exactly the exact copies, they are slightly different. They're a bit smaller, but we were happy with them. And today we found the missing ones. And I'm not surprised because when I saw this door, I was sure that somebody removed these doors. Then he had another building where he needed some hinges and he probably remembered these doors and he went there and took them off and used them. And here they are. That's crazy. Now, Anna, what should we do? Should we take off the ones that we bought <laughs> and put these back on? But there's oh still one goodness. missing. No, no way. It's too much work. Yeah, or we just keep them in our future museum because I think it's, it's such a cool story. This is really one of the things that I adore here on this Chateau project. You find these things, you, you rebuild the history of the building and I think that's amazing. I'm really pleased about that find and so surprised. So don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. For exclusive videos and behind the scenes updates, have a look at our Patreon page. Thank you so much for watching.